Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop is going to be to uh, X here. Uh, I noticed Jackson Hole wasn't quite surprised to see this yesterday posting this on X. They're delaying their uh, opening. Obviously, just if you've looked at any of the cams or you live there, you, you know this intuitively. I mean, there's just not enough snow. The upper mountain uh, is okay, but the lower mountain just doesn't uh, have what it takes. I mean, and they... They say it's just been warm uh, and they just need more snow and it's uh, TBD at this point as to uh, when they're going to open. So unfortunate there. Um, here's what it looks like this morning. You know, they're blowing snow, but uh, clearly you can see the lower part of the mountain here is really devoid of any natural snow. It looks like they're, they've got a nice run that they've made snow on right there, but uh, clearly not in the best shape right now. Um, but there are some chances of snow in the forecast. I don't see any blockbuster snows, but we'll look at it coming up. Into Colorado, we've got this northwest flow, and it's bringing in these little clippers, these cold fronts through the mountains. We had one yesterday. Um, we've got another one coming through right now. This is Arapaho Basin. You're looking off uh, in the Montezuma Bowl area in the southwest perspective. Everything is shrouded probably see some very light snow today in fact here's loveland just like yesterday morning it's uh socked in and shrouded there as well uh, likely just very light snow accumulation with this um as well let me show you uh here's what the radar looks like across the west so there's your flow coming out of the northwest there's not a ton of um, energy or moisture these are pretty minor fronts so far there are a couple of stronger ones in the extended forecast. I'll show you those coming up. You can see the blue returns, a little bit of snow up here in the parts of Montana. A teeny tiny bit coming across the Tetons and the Wind Rivers and Yellowstone. Let me take you down into Colorado here. You can see some of the very light blue returns on this northwest flow there um, across the mountains. So you might squeeze out a dusting in uh, some of these locations there across Colorado. Let me show you the, um, this is a water vapor satellite imagery, show you the big picture and it's clear as day on this, what the flow pattern is. So there's a, there's a storm system. Everything's kind of coming, coming up, up and over. And then there's your, your Northwest flow pattern um, being steered through the Rockies, the Northern Rockies, and then kind of ending up down in the central to northern mountains of Colorado. But the whites and the blues on this, that's your moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Your drier air is in the oranges, the reds, and the black colors. But that is your pattern for right now. All right, here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm looking at. So we've got this windy northwest flow and a clipper coming through Colorado. Uh, looks like this afternoon, maybe a dusting with that in the central and northern mountains. Now, a larger cold front is due in um, 28 into 29 across a lot of the Rockies, and then it's followed quickly by another one, another cold front, 1130 into 12 one. The positive thing about both of these, and I, I talked about this the last couple of days, is that they'll usher in colder air. It, thankfully, things have cooled down in many cases, but we still need to knock it down another notch in, in some of these locations. And so these will bring a little better chance of snow in colder air. Here are the best odds of accumulating snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So in Colorado, very light snow this afternoon, and then light to moderate accumulations with that cold front number one, and then moderate with cold front number two, um, I should say 11.30 into 12.1. And then in Utah, you've got uh, that front coming in. Afternoon, evening, 11.28 into the morning of 29. Light accumulations and then moderate to heavy into the uh, with that second front morning of 11.30. So that's good. Looking forward to that. And you, if you want to read out. And this is kind of what I was talking about with Wyoming. You've got, a, you've got numerous little shots of snow on this northwest flow. This morning, tomorrow morning, afternoon, evening, 1128, and morning of 1130. Those are all light in many cases, maybe light to moderate, but just no heavy accumulation all at one time. It, it just doesn't seem to be in the cards at this point. 
So here's the forecast radar, and, and I'll walk you through this. So we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Wednesday, November 26. And again, you can kind of see this, this flow pattern coming up and over the top, this northwest flow, and little pieces of that energy deposited down here into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. So here we go. Here's the dinner hour. So this is 5 a.m. on Thursday, November 27th. There's the lunch hour on Thursday. Dinner hour. This is 5 a.m. on Friday, November 28th. So this is our cold front. This is the storm system itself. Uh, and it's going to move down in this direction. So here we go. There's the lunch hour. Look at it hitting the Tetons here. Lunch hour on Friday, November 28th. Montana, parts of Idaho, just starting to cruise in to uh, northern Utah. There's the dinner hour. So you've got some snow over the Wasatch, the High Uintas, the central and northern mountains of Colorado. So here's 5 a.m. on Saturday, November 29th. At this point, the main low is already moving away. And all of this will be tapering uh, on the backside. So there you go. Um, let me show you the, uh, the time height forecast and show you how this looks at Arapahoe Basin in Colorado. So you're looking at a slice through the atmosphere over the next 72 hours. You start here and you move in this direction into the future. So I'm looking for the, and, and this is clear as day also, uh, you've got this northwest flow all the, all the way through. You can see that with the wind barbs. The winds are coming out of the northwest and they're quite strong, 50 plus mile an hour winds. So you've got one kink of moisture right here. That's this afternoon into early 27. Another tiny bit on the trailing end, late 27. And then this is a much better batch of moisture. This is actually that first stronger cold front and that's late on 28 into 29 so that's something to look forward to so that's all coming looking at the pressure fields these are pressure anomalies up at about 18,000 feet lower the normal pressures over the great lakes that's a pretty significant low uh, on thanksgiving so this is valid thanksgiving because this will be generating significant lake effect snow off michigan erie and Ontario. That could be a problem on Thanksgiving Day and much colder. And then higher than normal pressures across the West. But that will be changing. In fact, here it comes. So this is 1129 on Saturday. This would be the first of those cold fronts. You can see the uh, area of low pressure um, blowing through. So colder air would be filtering in behind that. Here's the second cold front. This is on 11.30 into 12.1 with an area of low pressure. Now, that's, this low goes a little bit further to the south, and that's why I think it will be a little bit better for um, Utah, a little bit better, especially for the Wasatch. A few days ago, it looked like the position of this low was going to be further to the north, and that would have only put the Wasatch on the periphery. So what we're seeing now is a better, is a better track for a lot of Utah. Um, let's look at some of the animated uh, forecast precip here. So over the next four or five days, this is total precip. So all the way through this upcoming weekend, and as if everything fell as rain, this is liquid. And I like to look for these yellows because that corresponds to about an inch of liquid. So that's about a foot of snow. Notice early, most of the precip is up here, but then that northwest flow starts to bend down and delivers. The dam breaks eventually on that second low, and that's where you see most of that precip in the Wasatch. Same thing, just different vantage point in the southwest. Very dry initially. It's that late front, 11.30 into 12.1, that delivers all of this precipitation. So let's look at snowfall. 10 to 1, there's your flow coming down into here. Um, on this, anywhere you see these deep purples, that's at least 6 inches where you see the bright pinks, that's a foot. So there's closing in on that bright pink up there in the Pacific Northwest and in parts of Colorado as well. Um, same thing, different vantage point out of the Southwest, very dry initially. And then you can see some of those bright pinks. Um, that's, that's a 
good case of 6 to 12 inches right there through southwest Colorado, western Colorado. Here's my official forecast. So these are grand totals by the close of business on 1130. 5 to 10 inches for the Wasatch, a few down here, Brian head to Snowball. We'll zoom into Colorado in a second. I've got 6 to 10 Bridger Bowl, Big Sky, Grand Targhee, Jackson Hole. Um, so 6 to 10 doesn't all come at one time, that's for sure, but um, at least it's something. It just I showed you the the timeline for the Tetons, and it's it's... It's several shots of light snow that accumulate to those numbers. Um, central to northern Idaho is best. Northwest Montana, 5 to 10. Very little up here in interior BC and Alberta. You'll probably get clipped with 5 or 6 through Fernie and Red Mountain. And a, a narrow ribbon here between um, Hood and uh, Baker of about 10 to 12 inches. Alieska does very well during this period. So let's zoom in to Colorado. Again, grand totals by 1130 close of business. Um, I've got tens up here where I think that Northwest flow will probably crank out a little bit extra. Six to eight through Keystone and Arapahoe Basin and Eldora, 10 Steamboat, 10 Vale, Copper, Aspen, Snowmass, Crested Butte. Um, and then here's your corridor of 6 to 10, 6 to 12, 6 to 14, if you count Wolf Creek there. That's probably going to be your high water mark, including a lot of the 14ers in the San Juans, probably 12 to 14 inches down there. 3 to 4, there's some snow that comes in on uh, 1130, continues into 12-1. So if we, if we actually included 12-1 on this, these numbers would be higher through Tao, Ski, Santa Fe, and Angel Fire. All right, let's go up to the northeast. Again, a lot of lake effect. Oh, that's a lot. You can really see it here coming off of Lake Michigan, Erie, Ontario. Um, so the deep purple, uh, dark purple, is at least six inches. The bright pink, and there's some bright pink here, is about a foot of accumulation. And most of that occurs... Um, off of the lakes. Up here in Vermont, New Hampshire, yeah, there's definitely some, especially up there over Washington, Mount Tremblant, looking pretty good. Here are my numbers uh, for this area. These are grand totals by the close of business on 1130. Um, and there it is. I mean, look at Tremblant, Jay Peak, and Stowe, 10 to 14 inches. I've got a foot on Mount Washington. Snow Ridge, some of that might fall as rain, but looking at 10, 11, 12 inches, somewhere in there. White face looking at 8, 9 inches. Killington 6 and then less as you go south. Um, 6, 7, 8 inches, though, pretty good. Those numbers have trended up through Cranmore, Sunday River, and Sugarloaf. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western view here. Again, grand totals by 1130. We're looking pretty good. Thank goodness we're going to bring in some colder air, um, and now it's just a matter of time where we stack up these storm systems and build these bases up that we need, especially across the Tetons and, and a lot of the Wasatch. we got to start building these bases up. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.